So, John, um, exercising on a low glycogen content uh, stimulates fat oxidation. Are there any further benefits? Well, yes, there are. There are lots of adaptations in the muscle which tend to promote training adaptation to a greater extent than when you train with normal muscle glycogen. However, I think the uh, emphasis on fat oxidation has perhaps been overemphasized in that most events that we're talking about in endurance activities are predominantly carbohydrate based. So although we increase fat oxidation dramatically, in all the studies so far, apart from one in the literature, we've been unable to detect a performance improvement. So yes, you can burn extra fat. Yes, you can give the muscle more adaptive machinery, but it doesn't at the moment seem to translate into useful improvements in athletic performance. And what are the disadvantages for this? Well, at the moment we've only got studies which have gone to a maximum of 10 weeks. So at the moment we've not really seen any deleterious effects on muscle or health. But my guess is that if you train chronically on a very low carbohydrate diet, you may be more prone to uh, disturbances in immune function. There may be a greater incidence of illness or injuries. But as I say, that evidence isn't out there yet because the majority of the studies have only used very short intervention periods. Based on the train low principle, would it be uh, better to train in the morning prior to breakfast? Certainly training uh, in the morning after an overnight fasted state and with low carbohydrate availability, either low muscle glycogen or low availability of carbohydrate coming in from exogenous sources, would burn more fat. There's absolutely no question about that whatsoever. Can you also train over a long period um, with a low glycogen content? Well, although low glycogen increases fat metabolism, uh, the problem with only using fat for a fuel for the muscle is that the intensity of exercise has to be reduced. So yes, you may be able to train over a longer duration, but for the athlete, if the intensity is compromised, that's probably not going to result in a greater adaptation or a greater performance. And what would you recommend to athletes um, who want to lose weight, body weight? Yeah, that's a good question. There's certainly evidence to show that if you train with low carbohydrate availability, either low muscle glycogen or exogenous sources of carbohydrate, that you will burn more fat. So if you do want to use more fat and you're trying to, uh, if you'd like, make weight before a competition, training with low glycogen availability could promote some of those adaptations to enhancing greater fat utilization. So would you also recommend to athletes um, to do a high intensity interval training with a low, in combination with a low carbohydrate diet? Well the studies that we've done certainly show that when you train with low carbohydrate availability in the muscle that your training intensity is compromised. But on the other hand, when we look at adaptations in the muscle, some of the training induced adaptations are actually amplified. So I guess it's a trade-off. You train at a lower intensity, which the coach or athlete may not be comfortable with, but as far as the things that we as exercise physiologists can measure in the lab, we think it gives the muscle adaptations which, in theory at least, should lead to enhanced performance. So would you recommend to athletes to consume um, protein before exercising? No, look, there is no evidence at the moment to show that protein ingestion before endurance type exercise has any benefit whatsoever. In fact, the studies which have looked at protein ingestion during endurance type exercise with carbohydrate have also shown no positive effects. Where there may be a role for protein is in post-exercise recovery, however.